Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here are corner posts for the solar mount. Uh, you might ask why there's three, if there's corner posts. But uh, two of them are 10 foot long, and one of them is eight foot long. For the front post, I'm actually gonna use that eight footer, cut it in half for two four footers, because they're gonna be short for the front post, tall for the back post. These are four by fours. They are treated, but we're gonna further treat them slightly with this asphalt emulsion over here. Just a covering for the part that's going to go in the ground. I learned that from our neighbors, Bill and Yvonne. That was a cool little tip um, while they're building their deck for their house. So we're going to do that. I think that's smart. Um, so we're just going to prepare these. I'm going to cut that one in half. We're going to co coat the bottoms of these and uh, get them ready to put in the ground. We have 82 trowels. You were digging? Well, I was trying to get that close. Pam, it's this. A trowel is what I want. A trowel. A trowel. Not a, this. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh my god. Please get me one trowel. Oh my gosh, I'm such That's a That's why I was wondering what was taking you so long. Because I was looking We have the shovel. the shovel. I want the trowel. That's not the That's called a trowel. That is not a trowel. You're talking about Pam, the concrete's drying. at the end of day one for the solar mount and you can see we've got the four posts two short front posts two tall back posts i've got them braced right now they're not really moving but just in case they're just braced for a little bit so the two back posts are definitely taller than they need to be i'll just cut them off to the height i want once i do some measurements and figure out what that is the bottom posts were both four footers well it was an eight footer that i cut in half so the work we had to do was to kind of make sure these were level, so we just put a board across there and leveled it. So those are level, but the back posts I don't really care about. I'm just gonna, when I, when I lay my rafters to be at the 27 degree angle that I want, I'll just, I'll just chop those where they need to be. So if they're do, the two of them are different, it doesn't really matter, I just chop them off. Um, but we, we used a couple of a couple of little tricks that we learned from our friends over at Upside of Downsizing. When they built their, let me get out of the way here. So we put a little collar around the base of the posts to build up a little extra concrete there and slope it away from the post. And we painted the bottom of the posts with uh, an asphalt emulsion for a little extra protection from weather and from insects. Uh, but there it is. As we went with these posts, we made our measurements all along the way to make sure all our distances were right, including the diagonal. So it's all nice and square. Um, all the posts face directly south. That'd be true south, not magnetic south, but true south. So this is looking at it this way. This is the way our panels are gonna, they're gonna slope down from back to front here at about 27 degrees. So here's our east, sun comes up, west sun goes down. So in the winter, it'll be out there fairly low, but in the summer, it's almost right overhead. But uh, there we go. So here we are the next day at the solar mount site. Um, looks like I've done more here than I actually have. All we've got is the four posts concreted in from yesterday. But I wanted to come out here and check the geometry, right? So I've drawn all this up in SketchUp, of course, to get all the accurate measurements and everything and, a, and an accurate count of the materials that I needed to buy, which was great. But 
One of the things that that SketchUp doesn't really do for me is account for the fact that this ground isn't a perfect, you know, level, flat floor with no slope to it, right? It's not the same. So in SketchUp, I could measure up an exact amount to the top of these posts and an exact amount to the top of these posts and know that all the geometry is going to be right. But because I'm out here on a real sloping ground with all kinds of imperfections in it, I have to sort of change that. So what I did was I've come out here and with these beams and everything's just kind of uh, clamped in place right now. But with these beams from front to back, these two, I've created basically a, a poor man's uh, laser level, right? So these beams, I clamped them into place and I got the, I put a, a two foot level on these and made sure they were level front to back. So what that tells me is the point where these beams cross the back here of these posts, they are level with the front. So I can pretend that that's a floor essentially that is nice and flat, kind of like the bottom of my SketchUp drawing, right? Except of course about two feet off the ground in the SketchUp drawing. So I've got a nice flat surface now. So now I can do some, some measurements that the geometry should work out. And that slope is, drum roll, exactly 27 degrees, which is what I'm looking for for the slope of my panels. So everything works out, all the distances, I'm all square, I'm all pointing south. Not only do I get 27 degrees here, but the span of that beam is exactly what I want it to be. And I mean, it's within a quarter of an inch of the actual geometry on paper. You know, the, the length that that hypotenuse of that triangle should come to. I won't bore everybody with the math, even though I find it really interesting. But if you want to know more, let me know or look it up. But, uh, but I love that stuff. And it came out, like I said, to within a quarter of an inch, the measurement here. So that tells me that I've got all my, all my posts in the right place and everything's going to work out here so just did this quick with some clamps so that means i can start the next step which is putting my front beam and my back beam and then putting those rafters of course i'm going to notch them a little bird's mouth cut like i did on the roof of the shed over there so nothing real fancy should be pretty simple so that's the next step okay so it's time to attach the front and back beams the back one is is uh, clamped on there in place the front one's kind of a no-brainer um, it just needs to be level with the posts that I've already cut off. And uh, when we put them in the concrete, we made sure that they were level across. So I'll just put that board across there, clamp it in place, put a level on it, make sure it's nice and level. And I'm gonna screw it in with these uh, Timberlock engineered wood screws. Thanks to one of our subscribers on a previous video for mentioning these. They are meant to replace lag bolts. So I'm gonna use these. I am gonna, um, they say you shouldn't have to pre-drill, but my experience with things that say you don't have to pre-drill is the wood almost always splits. So I tend to pre-drill everything. So I'm gonna pre-drill a small hole for these. And I'm also gonna countersink the poor man's way. I'm gonna use a, just a bigger drill bit to make room for the top. So that's how I'm gonna connect these. And that should do it. Start with the front one. So nice and level, nice and centered, two feet hanging off each sides, right from my sketch up. Sorry, I got bugs. Time to attach. So that's the front. The process, the uh, attachment process in the back is the same, except um, I have to chop off the top of the posts and after that chop them off I'll attach that back post the same as that front post two feet of overhang on either side same setup So now I'll clamp that back post in place just where it was before. Beam, sorry, back beam. And uh, attach it just like I did the front. So that should take care of the front and the back beams. They're both level. Um, I'll just do one final check. I mean, they're, they should be where I had them before clamped in place. So but I'll just do one final check with one of the bo these boards to check my angle. I need to take the phone to do that because I've been using that. But 
I can also check it with a square, at least pretty close. So uh, let's take a look at that and see where we're at. We're looking for 27. So one way, yeah, one way to check an angle is to take your speed square and get it to where it's level, using a bullet level, and it should line up with 27 degrees on that line is what I'm looking for. Looks good to me, but I'm gonna check it with the phone too. All right, so I've laid out two of my rafters here and measured and drawn their bird's mouth cuts so they can be notched to sit on the, the beams at the front and the back at a 27 degree angle. So I made all those measurements here and even just because I'm paranoid after I measured them and drew that, I walked them back and set them in place to see it that it looked right and it looks right. So I'm gonna cut those out with a saber saw. Up here. So here are those rafters in place with their bird's mouth cuts made. So let's get a close up look at those bird's mouth cuts. There's one, hopefully you can make that out with the lighting nice and tight. Um, this other one, don't mind this. <laughs> you see a little gap there. That'll be all right. That's just a, a function of this front beam and or the back beam being a little a little bowed and it might bend a little bit. They actually, since they're 16 footers, they actually bend a good amount. So what I'll do is when I, when I connect this, I'll make sure that I pull everything straight and square so that that measurement where that bird's mouth is, is absolutely correct. This beam has to be kind of pushed into place to meet it. So those will meet up. They just might need a little pressure applied to them to to straighten the boards out from any from any uh, bowing. So there's the top end, and here's the other top end over here. Okay, so we're gonna attach, attach the rafters now. So just like any roof rafter, uh, I'm going to use a rafter tie uh, connected with hot dip galvanized nails. These are actually left over from the shed build behind me. Um, so. That's about it. Again, making sure that that notch is pulled up tight against the beam when I connect them. Because I've made mistakes on this in the past, reference the shed video if you want, um, I'm gonna just use a couple of nails in each of these just to hold them in place for now. And I'll add the rest of the nails later. There, I already did it. I wasn't paying attention to the mark that I made, so I have to move that over. Just two nails in each rafter tie, so I'll have to finish that up later, but I just wanna make sure I'm in the right spot. I know the measurement I want between those two rafters to line up with the holes in the backs of the solar panels to connect to the unistrut that's gonna be on top of those rafters. So I'm gonna measure that, should be 45 and a half inches. So that's one column ready to go. I'll throw some unistrut on it at the bottom, a 10 foot piece on each side, and then start laying some panels on there. Okay, so there are the first two rafters with two pieces of unistrut just clamped onto them. That's about where they're gonna go, uh, you might notice. They hang over just the tiniest bit here. That's about an inch and a half. And that's because that board is 16 feet long and the unistrut that I need needs to be about, the panels, five panels going this way, are gonna be 16 feet, three and a half. So I have to hang over just the tiniest bit. Um, but that's all right, I'm just starting at the bottom here. I'm only gonna go, like I said, part of the way up for the first three panels. I'll worry about that top part when I move the panels from their existing location. Uh, so let me set up and give you a close-up of how the pieces all fit together here. All right, so here's a close look at the unistrut channel that is on top of the rafter. 
So the way I'm gonna, right now these are just clamped in place. The way I'm gonna attach these is with some wood screws, exterior wood screws, and some washers. So since this wood screw has a pretty small head, I'm gonna put it through that washer, and that washer goes in the channel. That washer goes in the channel, screw goes through the washer, through one of these holes, and so the washer is big enough to cover those gaps and hold that thing down. So I'm gonna do that. That's how we're gonna attach the unistrut to the rafter. And to attach the panel to the unistrut, we've got things called cone nuts here. Pretty standard for a unistrut. And a bolt that fits that cone nut. The idea is that cone nut goes in here and it's meant to squeeze in here and then turn once it's in place. It can be a little, they're a little tight. So once it's turned like that, when you, so the panel's on here, there's a hole in the back of the panel. This bolt goes through that hole and screws into that cone nut and it squeezes. And there's even some little kind of almost teeth on the back of that cone nut or on the front of that cone nut to pull against the unistrut. So that's, so you do one of those in every corner of the panel and you're good to go. So that's how everything's gonna go together. Let's, uh, let's attach this unit strut and then get one of the panels on. Just a little tip for you harbor freighters out there. If you want to buy this clamp from Harbor Freight for a lot cheaper than the Irwin, there's no problem with that. It seems to be working fine, but be aware, just be aware. There are, there are little kind of plugs back here. There's a plug with a, with a screw on it that's supposed to go through here and catch a, with a bolt with a nut that's supposed to catch on the other side. And they tend to work themselves loose. And if you lose one of them, as I have here, your clamp becomes not so useful anymore. So, but I should be able to return that to Harbor Freight, but just be aware of that. It does work fine. Just keep an eye on those pieces. Okay, time for a panel. <laughs> 